Only 46% of voters say they are absolutely sure of who they will vote for come September 20th, with conservative and liberal voters the most concrete in their vote choice at 49%. NDP and Bloc supporters are less certain, and Green Party supporters are the least confident in their choice. The numbers also indicate it's the NDP that has the most room to grow. 22% of those who indicated a first-choice party said they would consider voting for the NDP, with the Liberals, Conservatives and Greens lining up behind them. When we take a look at how Canadians are settled on their voting choices right now, it's incredibly volatile. Only about half of Canadians who say that they're voting for a particular party uh, say that they are absolutely certain and they won't, uh, they won't switch it, uh, their, their, their point of view. Uh, or their vote prior to uh, to the election campaign. So there's a lot of opportunity here still for movement. The biggest potential mo movement is between uh, the Liberal Party and the New Democrats. So what we're seeing uh, in this election campaign so far is that the biggest challenge in many ways for the Liberal Party has been the New Democratic Party. These are disappointed progressive voters who were previously voting for either the Green Party or for the Liberal Party who are now uh, giving the NDP a, a very serious look and have moved over to them uh, through the course of this election campaign. And one question that has always proven to be incredibly accurate in terms of the dynamics of the campaign and predicting where things are going is asking, just asking people which party is gaining the most popularity and momentum during the course of the election campaign. And what we're seeing here uh, is that the Conservative Party is seen by most of the people in the country who want to make a, a choice on that as being the party that's gaining the most popularity and momentum, followed by the NDP, the Liberal Party going in the other direction. And interestingly, it's not just you know, people voting for the opposition parties who feel that way. It's also people who say that they're currently voting for the Liberal Party who feel that way. So that just shows you what's happening in this election campaign. Started off, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, on uh, three weeks ago, uh, trying to get out of the uh, out of the, uh, the the blocks ahead of the opposition parties, and tripped on the way out, and have simply not recovered. Uh, and what we've seen is the other parties picking up steam, and people, the voters, now recognizing that of the parties that seem to be leading the pack at the moment, it's the Conservative Party. What that means is that uh, you know the Liberals have a big uh, a big perception uh, problem that they're going to be dealing with that they have to change around. But also, you're going to see an increasing amount of of of, uh, of uh, attention uh, for the Conservative Party and its leader Aaron O'Toole. And the question is, over the next couple of weeks, will he be able to stand up to it? What we saw in the last election campaign was that his predecessor Aaron, Andrew Scheer was not able to deal with it. Let's see if uh, uh, of uh, Aaron O'Toole is made of different stuff. Really, what we're talking about here is the potential for movement between and among parties. Uh, so uh, if there is any movement through the rest of the campaign, and most assuredly will be, where are people likely to go? And what we're seeing right now um, as the biggest challenge to the Liberal Party uh, going forward is the potential that more progressive voters who are currently with the Liberal Party and are disappointed that they were put in uh, to this election circumstance and are disappointed with the Prime Minister, more and more are taking a serious look at Jagmeet Singh and, and the NDP. And if that happens, uh, you know, the potential that the Liberal Party could go down even further than it is right now certainly exists. Uh, yes, uh, the, the NDP will win more seats as a result of that, particularly in places like British Columbia and Ontario. But also what you're going to see is going to divide the vote in a lot of ridings where um, they weren't competitive in previous elections uh, among progressive voters that are going to create opportunities for conservatives to make some pickups in places like they did, say, for example, in the 2011 election under Stephen Harper, where the NDP did really well in the election, particularly in the province of Ontario, and a lot of three-way splits worked for the Conservative Party in the 905 region, which is why Stephen Harper uh, became Prime Minister of Canada with a majority government.